the death of Moses. So remember, we talked about California being an island and the Red Sea was the sea between. Okay. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab. Okay. We're going to stop right there. We're going to go here. Okay. And I'm going to, okay. Why is it doing this? Okay. So he left the plains of Moab. Okay, here we are, Colorado, okay, New Mexico, Arizona, okay. Here's where, here we are in the state. Everyone can see this okay. This will be kind of a quick overview. Like I said, there, um, um, Garimo's video is fantastic and goes in a little more into the depth, but, uh, you know, my, my niche has been articles, and we'll, we'll dive into some articles here too that will kind of substantiate this. But here we are in Moab, okay, to Mount Nebu. Okay, here's Mount Nebu. Okay, and this is a t gigantic mountain. Okay, so here's Moab. Here's Mount Nebu, right? Okay, we already talked about Salt Lake City here. We talked about the Great Salt Lake, the Dead Sea, Utah Lake, the Sea of Galilee. Okay, both of these, this is what they were stated as, okay? And the Jordan River that connects both of them, okay? We started off the episode talking about all the high-level masons and shriners, that this was Mecca, and that they took their pilgrimage to the Salt Lake Temple and hitched their camels, okay? <clears throat> At the top, the plains of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho, the Lord showed him the whole land. Okay, Mount Nebo is gigantic, okay? Um, the Nebo of Palestine is 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 a, not even a mountain. They don't even call it a mountain. They call it an elevation. Um, this is like five times as large. You can't see anything from the Nebo of Palestine, and from this one, you can see absolutely the valley. <clears throat> the Lord showed him the whole land. Okay, so what's another important reference here? Is so Mount Nebo. In the 1850s, this region was called the Mining Lands of Ophir, okay, of Solomon. They called this the Mining Lands of Ophir, Mount Nebu and the Mining Lands of Ophir, okay? Important reference. <clears throat> he showed him the whole land. So he showed him the whole land. You're not showing anyone a whole land on 2,000 feet, which is about the elevation of Nebu of Palestine. Whereas this one's about 12,000. From Gilad to Dan, okay? Um, remember that name, Dan, okay? There is no Dan, but there is... Daniel, Utah, just north of here, outside of Provo, Okay which is right inside that reference that we were making between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. The territory of Ephraim and Manesha, all the land of Judah, as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev and the whole region of the valley from Jericho, the city of Palms. Now this area is covered in palm trees, southern especially. The Lord said to him, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'll give it to your descendants. I have let see it with your eyes but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, and the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. And the Lord had said he buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Yor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now these, these customs of mourning and weeping you find amongst the Indians in the Southwest. Um, again, we talked about the um, Hebraic, not only the language, but the symbols and the customs uh, amongst some of these Indians have endless overlays. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and we talked about Daniel and this area, the plains of Moab, Mount Nebu, 
the mining lands of Ophir, the lands of Solomon, where he got all his gold. <clears throat> Salt Lake City, the Mecca of Galilee and the Dead Sea. And then we're going to finish up going over some articles really quick um, about the Danites of Utah and why that's so important. Because the Danites and the Phoenicians, huge overlays here with the Indians and the Mormons. There were two groups of Mormons. We're going to talk about that really quick here. Hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Um, yeah, I didn't get to cover everything as usual. Um, but uh, yeah, we're running a little late here. So I'll just breeze through these. Um, expect throughout the week that I'll do a few more little shorts, break these articles up get some more stuff out that I wasn't able to fit into this article. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. It's not showing that share screen with images is really, really annoying. I apologize. Paganism in California. Now I read this article when I did the, the California episode, but why is this important? We're going to jump down to the bottom. Nearly every nation on the face of the globe has helped to people the United States. This is true. That's because the United States and America people the world. All of the races of the world from a um, um, archaeological standpoint come from here. The oldest representations of, of many of the races come from the Americas, South, Mexico, North. And we have now clearly all the professed religions in the world from Christianity to the bastard Mohammedans, as in Utah. Okay. This is a really old article. It's from the 1850s. It seems silly. Why would I share that? But it's not silly because th through these few more here that I'm going to present, it's a trend that disappeared and no one talked about. Tuesday evening, a white Mormon named Caldwell attacked an Aztec of the lost tribes of Israel at Severe River. Okay, Severe River is the forest, the river running through the forest where they found those stone pipes running underground and where the big um, bridges, they called natural bridges, but I believe were created by the hands of man, surrounded by all those prehistoric cities. This is in that same area. Tuesday evening, a white Mormon named Cadwell attacked an Aztec of a lost tribe of Israel at Severe River Bridge about undue intimacy with the plaintiff's daughter. Okay, this is 1850s. Okay, they're having an argument, but look how look at the, the way they're describing each other. Okay, you don't find this language anywhere else. Okay, this was returned by the Lamanite with a brave revolver and pistol. The assailant missed while the defendant got in two shots. Okay, so seems again without context. Why are you sharing this? But but as we go further along, it's going to be become more evident that what was going on in the 1840s and 50s in the American Southwest is not what we were told, and that the groups of people were not what we were told. The Mormons arming Ogden, May 1st, a circular ordering the brethren to convene at the ward schoolhouses for drill was privately circulated through Salt Lake on Friday. Drilling and arming continue throughout the territory of Utah. 50 Danites are said to have been rolled since Brigham Young's return. Meanwhile, Brigham declare Mormonism is peace. Now, what's the reference that I'm making there? Well, the Danites. Okay, hmm. the Mormons are arming themselves against the U.S. government, and they're, and they're hiring Danites. Now, why don't we hear anything about these Danites in the 1850s? Who are these Danites from Utah? Well, here's a quote from Brigham Young. On page 148 of the Desiree News, Volume 7, this is from the 1850s. President Brigham Young says, if men come here to Utah and do not behave themselves. Now, remember, the Mormons were being killed all over America. They were being killed in Missouri. They were being killed in Illinois. They were being killed in Florida, murdered in the streets. Brigham, um, Joseph Smith was murdered. If men come here and do not behave themselves, they will not only find the Danites, whom they talk so much about, biting the horse's heels, but the scoundrels will find something biting their heels. In my plain remarks, I merely call things by their right names. With the concluding sentence attached, this paragraph cannot be constructed ironically that a secret band or junto once existed among the Mormons. Yes, the secret band of the Mormons is the Danites. 
Okay, this is incredibly important. Yes, it was Joseph Smith's Mormon militia. Yes, yes, and they called themselves the Danites. The secret militia was called the Danites. Okay, incredibly important. But think of all of what we were talking about. What was Salt Lake to these people? Okay, the language. The Book of Mormon is descended from a Micmac Egyptian golden tablet from a mound of giants found in New York, okay, that led them to the Mecca, the holy promised land, the land of Ophir, the land of Solomon, which is Utah, the city on the Jordan River between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, where Moses led his people across the Red Sea and where he was buried in Moab, okay? You feeling what I'm putting together here, you guys? But truth denies his existence now. Yes, it was a secret band. That's why this quote is incredible. This was Desiree News. This was posted in their own in their own Mormon literature, but you don't find anything about it. He's saying to you in his own words, and this is the only time I've ever found that he actually admitted to it. If you come here and try to hurt our people, you will only find the Danites. And then they will they will run you out of town. The scoundrels will find something biting their heels. But truth denies his existence now. This may be, they may have changed their name for the purpose of executing more successfully the duties enjoined on them. Yes, everything went underground. Remember, the U.S. government was killing the Mormons. Okay? The U.S. government was killing the Mormons. What pushed the Mormons west? Many things. <clears throat> Many things that, that the people don't talk about to get today. The wagon trains leading to the west were they they were burned alive they were thousands of people were killed on these wagon trains okay we got a few more of these to get through we're almost at the end thanks for sticking with me you guys wanted to finish with this because this is really important stuff the washington correspondent of the boston post again this is from 1850s the talk about removing the army from kansas before her admission <clears throat> as a state is perfectly futile because in the present condition of things, there is as much danger of rapine, murder, and destruction of property from the branch of the Mormon Danites headed by Jim Lane in Kansas as from those headed by Brigham Young at Salt Lake. Kansas was another area where they had um, kind of a last bastion and they were being murdered. And Kansas was being admitted into the U.S. government and that was the end for the Mormons. They knew it. They knew if that they had to fight with all their might where they were all going to be killed. So the two leaders are no doubt in concert. And the moment the troops should leave Kansas for Utah, Lane's Danites would unquestionably begin a civil war there, which would be far worse in its effects than anything that would happen at Salt Lake. Exactly. This is an important overlay because this is this relates directly to what was going on during the Civil War. Okay, this was an, this was an internal war. And there's no coincidence here between the language that I've laid out for you, that the secret Mormon militia, more man, were the ancient Danites. And what is ancient? Okay. These people were returning to their Mecca, where they dug out their old city, the, the land of Ophir, the Temple of Solomon, the Mecca, the land between the Sea of Galilee. And uh, the power of that from the... Okay, we got one more and then we'll finish. This one's good. Hope you're enjoying this, you guys. Thanks again for being here. A body of seceders from the Mormons who have fled from the power of the Danites and from the territory of Utah have arrived at the Mormon settlements on the North Fork of the Plight River and brought the intelligence that hostile movements among the Mormons of Utah against the United States troops have already begun. There are reports that a large force under Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball was preparing to leave Salt Lake City for a campaign in the mountains eastward with the avowed object of falling upon the United States troops as if they should have reached that neighborhood and cutting them off before they they snow, snow have had opportunities to entrench themselves or received any reinforcements. It was generally supposed that in secret conclave, the leaders had determined to make the attack at the pass of Bear River Cutoff near the steeple rocks, and that if they should succeed in finding the, the troops in the region, 
they would be able to exterminate them. Immense military preparations are known to have been making for many months, and nearly the whole population have been under drill, so that they are considered good and well-disciplined dis soldiers. They expect to be able to destroy the force dispatched this fall, and with the reinforcements which will reach them in the spring from the states and from other countries to resist successfully any force that can possibly be sent against them and establish an independent government. How much of this statement is an exaggeration remains to be seen. These bastard Mohammedan Mormons, Jewish Sephardic Mormons, Danites, Danite militia fighting the U.S. government that's moving west. 